Hi, and welcome to beautiful sunny Ludlow and the third anniversary of the Secret Healer books. And I want to say thank you to Katerina Kabaha Kralova. Kralova. I think I've said it right. It's a beautiful name. And um, although I don't know why I'm saying thank you, uh, Katrina, you've given me sleepless nights <laughs> with these questions. I feel like I've had to do a new degree just to answer them. So she had three questions. So... First of all, how much raw matter um, goes into essential oils? So that's a fairly easy question. I'll answer that in a moment. Then she wanted to know about sustainability. She said that there's, can, can we talk about overusing and exportation and generating income for poor communities? There's lots of uh, conflicting evidence, uh, uh, information out there. So Katrina, I'm going to do that in another video, a separate one, because it's a subject in itself. Um, and also she wanted to know the quality of difference between ex expensive brands and cheaper because Young Living claim they are purer than other brands. Well, I think, Katerina, I've answered that one already in Hilary Lacroix's um, video. So I'm going to refer you to that one. But I am going to answer on this video the how much raw matter of a plant goes into essential oils. And it's a massive, massive um, subject area. So I'll give you some examples. We go usually go on um, percentage yields. Uh, yield. So, for example, mint is a nice easy one. It has between 1 to 2.5% yields. So basically, uh, we need um, 100 kilos of plant matter to get a kilo of oil. So that's an easy one. So by um, comparison, so mint is 1%. Rose petals are 0.00006%. And so you're looking at about um, 10,000 kilos of, um, sorry, pounds of um, petals to get a pound of oil. I think it's um, 105 pounds of petals will make a 5 mil bottle of oil for you. So it's incredible, isn't it? Um, neroli is also small, it's 0.1% yield, so uh, what we're looking at, a thousand, um, a, thou a thousand kilos to get a kilo of oil. Um, Melissa is really small, like, um, like Rose, and actually this is one of the reasons why people adulterate Melissa and we have an official Melissa type and a Melissa true, because pure Melissa needs uh, 6,000 leaves or plants, leaves I think, um, leaves per, pa uh, per pound of oil. So it's 0 0.00, sorry, no, do that again, 0.015% yield. Uh, rosemary is quite high, it's 2% yield. Frankincense varies a lot depending on where the strain of frankincense came from. So again, that's going to dictate how much you pay for your frankincense. In some regions, it'll have a, um, a range of 3.5% all the way up to 6% 6, uh, 6, uh, yield. By comparison, so if you think we're looking at, for rose, 0.006%, clove bud is between 14 to 21 percent so you don't really need a, a great deal of cloves um, to get very strong smelling oil do you so um, yeah very interesting and these are guidelines they're not specifics sorry for the train so for example what's going to happen is that oil is going to be different every time that it's distilled it'll have a different yield so it depends on a million different things so i'll read you my list of things that are made it's going to depend on how high what altitude it was grow, uh, grown at and what temperature it's been exposed through, through through the year how much um light how much wind and how much rainfall those are the things that are going to affect the secondary metabolites in the um, oil so for example if there's a big change in climate or for some reason a change in um, soil conditions then that will influence um, the oil content as well likewise the condition of the plant crop um, you'll have genetic factors that will make it more prone to make oil but also how well it's been irrigated through the year um, also the ratio of the different parts used so did they use more stem did they use more leaf did they use more flower all of those will affect 
what the um, percentage yield is when they harvest so particular not just um the time of the year but the time of the day makes a difference so um roses are um, picked at dawn up to about eight ten o'clock after that they too many volatiles have, have lifted off so also you'll have um, different plants that are picked by the moon um, that makes a difference if you pick at the wrong time of the day the oil content will be lower um, how long they're stored for and how um, are this the conditions that they're stored in sometimes it's better to store for longer periods sometimes you have to make the oil immediately different chemotypes of um, the plant will have different amounts um, of oil so for example um, on my in my garden I've got a, a time clock with 12 different times in it around a sundial if I were to distill them and compare them I would find that the essential oil yields was probably different in every single chemotype even though they were all times um, we can say provenance um, again how yeah so lavenders for example um, how is a lavender propagated so um, if you plant a lavender from a seed it will take about six years to be able to grow to a um, position where you can extract oil from them but if you uh, take cuttings it's much quicker what you'll find is if you take cuttings though these are clones of the same plant but if you um, plant seeds then you'll get a field that's all different type colors of lavender each plant has its own individual um, sort of personality but it is an individual plant so it's a different color and each one will have a different essential oil yield whereas if you're using a clone to a certain extent you can pretty much be able to dictate you know you can't you can't dictate the weather weather but you can be able to emulate it over and over again um how long they've been transported and how they were transported were they stuck in a ship forever and ever or did they go from one very quickly from production to essential oil production um yes yeah, so there's one theory from the university of alabama that stressed plants actually make more oil and they are looking to be able to try and see if it works the same way as if you are a stressed person who's had a lot of issues happen to you in life. You acquire more knowledge and become probably quite a resilient person and able to deal with challenges. They're wondering whether that stays the same true for essential oils. So that'll be interesting to find out if that's true. Um, and the, Ascent, the University of Nice are which is NIS rather than NICE, which I think is in India, um, thinks that maybe the essential oil con uh, content will be dictated by the kind of chemicals within them. So ones that have less than a 1% um, yield seem to be m more um, fuller of fatty acids and carotenoids, whereas um, the ones that have a really rich essential oil um, yield tend to be f fuller of things like monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes so again they're looking to see if they can prove that that it's the chemistry that dictates whether it'll have a high yield so i hope that's answered it for you it's really interesting i enjoyed doing that katarina i won't enjoy the sustainability one that's giving me sleepless nights so <laughs> cross your fingers for that later um so there we go I wanted to say thank you for the incredibly difficult questions and the support and to say please send me your details so I can send you a copy of my new book. For the rest of you, it's on Amazon. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine.